So the the next opinion uh, comes from Vance. Right. So uh, it's pretty simple. I hate the term Zen Rand. I hate that everyone throws it around <laughs> because I feel it's a complete misconstruction of what Zen is about and specifically what Buddhism is about. So that's just kind of why. Now, if they said he's Bodhisattva Rand, I would totally be <laughs> on board with that. But they're not calling him Bodhisattva Rand. They're calling him Zen Enlightened Rand. Uh, and I'm like, I don't think Rand's really achieved enlightenment because he has no desire to uh, pass on into Nirvana and from existence. He wants to keep being reborn. So uh, my hot take slash unpopular opinion is that uh, it's more correct to call Moradin Zen Moradin than it is to call Rand Zen Rand because Moradin actually wants to escape the cycle of rebirth within Whoa. the Wheel of Time. That's, is uh, this a so, yeah. babe? It's not a pro Morden opinion. Well, maybe I don't know. Ever not ever since, uh, did you even read the books? I don't know. Dude, it's it, not, it's hard for me. Wrong. I definitely me? Morden yeah. wanted to kill himself because of Gawain. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, but, the uh, only reason that he actually lets himself die is because he doesn't realize that Gawain's already gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, wait, wait. He he went on a suicide thing? Okay, no, we're good. All right, shake hands. All right, thank you. All right, see you, right. See you at brunch. Oh, also, when I do die, I am going to need you to bail fire me because otherwise I will be brought back and it's going to be horrendous. Right. <laughs> So yeah, that's just kind of my uh, my hot take. Uh, you know, ever since I realized that about the character on um, on my read through the uh, series, I was like, mm, I feel a l- I feel for him a little bit. Not to say he hasn't done terrible things, but you know, you do kind of get the sense that this is a tortured person, and it, I think that makes him a compelling villain. On top of that, so anyway, right. uh, I'll go ahead and pass the baton. All right, Badger, thoughts. So I feel like I don't have. And a full understanding of like the deep deeper nature of zen like you do so i can't like fully talk about that but I, at least from my my understanding part of it is sort of being at peace with your situation and i think that's definitely something that Rand comes to at peace with the fact that he is tied to loose there and he is loose there and um and then sort of at peace with uh the fact that you can't control everything around you and i think Rand gets to that point as well to where he's not saying um I need to drag everyone to the last battle and, and do this because it's my thing. It's more of an understanding of I love all these people and so it's something that I can do for them while I'm letting them you know, fight for themselves as well. But that's all I got, so I'll pass it on, which is that quick thought. Um, yeah. Uh, so for me, largely, it would be a, a lot of the same. I don't have an in-depth understanding of Zen and Enlightenment, uh, especially from the traditions that uh, that you've uh, mentioned Vance um, just don't I mean I've studied it very very minimally one semester of a college class that touches on it for like maybe five weeks if even that isn't enough to, to understand any well just about right. anything um, but I mean I think the motive behind it is a lot like Badger said you know somebody that comes to terms with their situation you know there's a a, a part where Rand is once he understands that the prophecy seems to indicate that he's going to die um, that he's like I don't want to die but I also don't want to channel and I'm going crazy shut up loose there and I'm thinking here <laughs> and he resists that so much and we see Rand for so long being the you know the the emo Rand the stay away from me I can't be close to anyone I'm gonna die just leave me alone Toby McGuire in Spider-Man yeah. 3 yeah pretty much <laughs> So we get that for so long. So part of whenever Rand has his epiphany moment on Dragon Mount, you know, standing on, uh, as some people would call a Dick Mountain, and <laughs> just being like, I don't, I, just having that moment where he's like, I shouldn't repeat the mistakes of the past, you know, that it's so refreshing. It seems like such an incredible 180 from what he was that it's kind of like, we, we want to say that he's enlightened, that he's Zen, that he's all together and, and perfect. Um, and he's not. I'm glad that Toby Maguire has joined us. Welcome back. Sir. Yes. <laughs> no running over pro, uh, not, uh, no running over paparazzi this time <laughs> or taking their camera, whatever it was he did. I can't remember, but it was funny. 
No, he just shouted at him, like, telling him to get the F out the way. Uh, anyway. <laughs> danced a lot. Oh, yeah. But, uh, I, I would agree that by virtue of definition of the words and what they mean and what they entail, yeah, it's, it's completely inaccurate, even from my little bit of an understanding. And I think it's one of those things that's a phrase that caught on because it captures the, the feeling and the thought of the readers as they're reading what happens that in comparison, it's, he seems like much more of a Zen, um, character than he did, uh, previously. So I think that's, uh, yeah, that's not so much an agree or disagree, more of a ex trying to explain where the word came from or the phrase came from, I guess. My favorite kind of topic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I would say that they, uh, to that point, I, I'm not linguistically uh, so in tune as far as what Zen itself means. Uh, but I would say that what people are referring to is maybe harmony or um, mm. or bliss or peace or serenity that, that whatever that whatever we find uh, what emotion that we can call ran where um, and and to be honest when we think about when I think about the the Buddhist like sitting under uh, or I'm sorry the um, under the banyan tree or whatever watching the river. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's it's that that nirvana or that enlightenment kind of comes from the acceptance of what um, of the nature of things to a certain mm -hmm. degree, and that's that's not too far from what I sense from Rand when he's walking away. He's uh, he's kind of becoming just the the happy hermit that's just. That's just going off into into some cave to just you know collect his thoughts or something, um, and so that's probably where Zen comes from when we call it Zen Ran. Uh, but mm -hmm. I I think of it as just uh, harmonious, I guess, or or, hmm. or blissful. Um, that sort of non caring about things that we associate with being a, a, a Zen enlightened person, I suppose. But I, yeah, I, that's pretty much where I'm at. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I would actually agree mostly with what people have already been saying, but like just a little bit further on the take uh, is that mentally healed Rand just does not have the same ring to it. <laughs> uh, and that's what happened. He's just over himself. Uh, and Rand. he has become one with Luz Theron, which was always him. Mm. It's always been loose there. It it's was always, always been it's um, always been Wankersham. <laughs> but but it's definitely again one of those things where where I, I mean this is a, this is a little bit what we were talking about before of people will come up with easy names for things. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so they right. are attributing this Zen, which is absolutely a concept, though I will also say I am not incredibly familiar with it. I think I'm more familiar with it than a number of other people have said they are. Uh, but it is also really hard to pinpoint what enlightenment and serenity and nirvana and Zen actually fully is. And so it is definitely a concept of if you go ask a Buddhist monk right now <clears throat> what Zen, what getting to nirvana for you would look like, they would be like, I have no idea. I'm not you. So it is actually mm -hmm. different for different people. And so mm -hmm. I think that really, as far as Rand's situation, he does get as close to Zen, as close to Nirvana as he could get that get to. Um, and so I, I definitely, again, still think definitively, you are absolutely right. That Zen is not actually the right word for him and that it's actually just non-Darth Rand, you know, mentally <laughs> healed, <laughs> right, or right. whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that he really has, it, it is accepting Rand. Uh, and that really mm. isn't quite the same thing as Zen. But again, none of those roll off the tongue as well. None of those sound Fair. as nice. And so colloquially and, and connotatively, definitely, you know, Zen Rand works unless you're actually really talking about the definitive concept of what you're talking about. So I could not agree more. Stupid Americans are stupid. Um, and that's a 
that's a thing that's all over it's not just america but at the same time like again people are going to misattribute words uh and that is absolutely what has happened here <laughs> all right that that happens yeah. a lot all right drew and, and i'm back by the way oh yeah welcome back welcome hey, back Josh! it's that boy we can resume the party we've been everybody. trashing you for like 20 minutes i uh, i believe it yeah it was great but yeah drew what do you think <laughs> I'm gonna get you, Daniel. <laughs> if any, if everyone doesn't know, my goal for this podcast is actually just to get Daniel to spit orange juice on his camera. <laughs> That's my goal. It'll That's the that only reason I'm still here. Because there's champagne in it, it's gonna ruin <laughs> my computer. <laughs> I regret nothing. Mimosas. Look at this fancy pants. Woo. Ooh, well, fancy. I got an industrial size uh, sparkling wine bottle. From, oh uh, my god! Oh, he's got he's got uh, larger than guys. That's we that's like bottom like shelf right there. Made endless mimosas like you wow. would get out at a restaurant, but of course restaurants are closed because plague. Uh, and mm. so we were having fun this morning, and we didn't finish because people had things to do. So well, that's that is the I hate it when I don't finish of bottles. <laughs> both of those were really good i like both of those in tandem unrelated right. to anything does anyone feel like america 2020 is basically hinder snap village <gasps> we we just did an episode on that oh did you really did. oh i gotta go see we that did. yeah i listened to it, it was not good oh nice that it's good. 2020 is hinder snap but we oh, did okay. an episode on hinder snap on and hinder. it was yes. yeah yeah, that's going to be good. another great horror episode on the TV show. Ooh, I hope they terrify the hell out of that. Oh yeah, this is going to be a you dark get... TV show. If they're you guys are faithful. letting Drew just eat up his time so he doesn't have to respond. <laughs> no, okay, <laughs> I actually, I, I actually have a substantive answer to Vance's comment. Do you? Um, Do you? I'm interested. You have a substantive answer? I would not. Ask that. Mm -hmm. Roof is in the okay, so pudding. I, I 100 percent agree with Vance. It. My 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 technical understanding of Zen is okay. strictly from Vance, so that's probably why I agree with him. But I've always called, and to be clear, I'm talking about post Dragon Mount, pre last scene Rand, the Rand right in between those moments. I've always seen that as a Jesus Rand, and I, and I don't mean that in a loose like. I'm American, Jesus is the, you know, he's Jesus kind of way. I, I literally mean in the sense that, I mean, for one thing, Jordan was um, not Presbyterian. Was he Methodist? Episcopalian. Uh, Episcopalian, okay. <laughs> so uh, obviously he had Christian, a heavy Christian influence. Thank you, Josh. Um, <laughs> but Rand, Rand has been leveraging his own power up to this point. He's been trying to arrange things himself and suddenly, after Dragon Mount, he goes where he feels the pattern is taking him. He, multiple times, literal miracles. Tav like, before his Taveran Ness just randomly affected people's lives. After his moment, after Dragon Mount, his Taveran Ness specifically benefits people's lives. You know, he... He has profound insight into people. Um, there's a cool verse that calls G in the Bible that calls Jesus the searcher of hearts. And then you have that scene where Rand literally lines up the Tyrian lords and just strolls down them, looking into their eyes and says, you, your time is over. Go. And it's literally like a Judas Iscariot, like the time is now. Do, do what you need to do. I mean, it... So there are so many motifs that fit that fit Christ more. And then when you when you take into account what Rand does is take upon himself responsibility for everyone else, even though he didn't need to, and go die for them. And so it's like it's very Jesus-y imagery. Um yeah, there's a there's a very clear Eastern influence, and I think that made it fresh. You know, if if it was just like jesus in a fantasy setting that'd be a little boring uh, because it's like we've seen that a lot of times so there, there's a there are a lot of eastern influences but i would say the core essence of what's happening the way rand relies upon a power 
larger than him to take him where he needs to be to accomplish what needs to happen around him you know all of that's very that's very christian influence so anyway it, i don't trivially call him jesus rand uh and i think that's more fitting like van you know i think vance is right zen rand is misappropriated he he is a jesus figure though too so there is yeah. that to take into account yeah yeah uh, his so... blood spilled on the rock i mean that's like hello yeah, brands are <laughs> right. I mean, yeah, all that imagery there is very intentional. I Wait, feel, can we on play Jordan's a game part. Uh, on our next YouTuber panel where we just do trivia? Where it's is this by the Bible or is this Wheel of Time? <laughs> Would you like to play a game? <laughs> all right, Ryan, uh, your thoughts. Um, well, I just want to say that I do actually agree that Zen Rand is inappropriate, and you are correct that Bodhisattva Rand is more appropriate. A Bodhisattva <laughs> is someone who's attained the ability. So a Bodhisattva, there's Zen hmm. Buddhism and Mahayana Buddhism and Theravada Buddhism. Mahayana Buddhism is where we get Nirvana, and Nirvana is uh, is released from everything. And a Bodhisattva is someone who could be in Nirvana but chooses to stay amongst the people to help mm. relieve suffering from the people. So that's absolutely correct. I do disagree, though, that's that Zen uh, is, is equated to Morden. I think that's an, <laughs> may, maybe an, in a, uh, like a misinterpretation <laughs> of Zen itself. Zen is not necessarily about the release. It's not about the absence of desire. It's more about like the release of the ego and uh that you know, like working on dualities and, and different mm -hmm. things like that um so i don't i don't so i'm half agreeing with you okay sure. yeah, zen is the we should discuss we this at another way. time nirvana is the release oh i'm just kidding that Ooh, was, hey, that was a joke. I, I promise that's... release <laughs> yeah well since it, it, it was a joke but it actually worked kind of well well since we have you back uh ryan was that does that complete your your thoughts yeah 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 that, right. so josh so oh, if I can, very much for that that lesson because I let didn't me see, actually know all of that. So thanks. Let me see if I can surmise the uh, the unpopular opinion. The term Zen Rand <laughs> is that the unpopular opinion? <laughs> Roughly, but in more yeah, yeah, to told you what the unpopular opinion was since you had to. Yeah, he wasn't so, here at the time. And I, I I will I will give a caveat of I believe we're splitting hairs a bit. Which is kind of what we're doing with the show. So I mean, I'm going to split what, them. What as are we here for can. if not to split them, right? <laughs> yeah. So when you talk about Zen Rand, you know, you talk about the, the state of Zen is the state of oneness. The state of losing the barrier between yourself and what is around you. And Rand, when he makes his transition into Zen Rand, you know, they immediately have these, like, beautiful scenes of everybody like, I won't unload the barges because the grain is spoiled. And Rand is like, oh, really? Let me look. <laughs> oh, not only is it not spoiled, it's fat, thick grains that are nutritious, high in amino acids. Um, then there's, like, the apple orchard scene, you mm -hmm. know, where he's like, oh, look at these trees. They are no longer withered. They are... Apples, and I think why it's is, why is he Stewie Griffin after he comes don't down from you <laughs> I know, right? me when I'm pontificating, Brian. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> no, but um, God but damn it, Stewie, you're eating hair pie. <laughs> I feel like I feel like Rand. I, I think I think I, I guess I'm going to disagree. I'm, I guess I'm going to say. I think Zen is a an accurate descriptor because what you see is that where Rand is concerned, where Rand is, is, is reflecting his sort of mental state. He mm -hmm. is now thriving as the Dragon Reborn. He has finally accepted who he is, what he is to do fully, and that acceptance is now transcending into the physical world, into the pattern around him. And everywhere he goes, the pattern is 
correcting itself from the Dark One's touch due to his presence. So I mm-hmm. feel like that term, and when you talk about Zen and oneness and being one with the surroundings around you, I feel like that's appropriate because you've got the physical world around Rand manifesting its health and happiness because of his presence and superior oneness with the pattern. Hmm. All right. I like it. Nice. Good points all around, everybody. This... You definitely all given me more stuff to think about <laughs> in this uh, this ongoing discussion slash argument I have with the community. So it almost <laughs> sounds like I will think on it Adam, and that's come why back later. It almost sounds like at a minimum everybody agreed that it's an in a that the name itself is in a is not accurate. Except uh, for Josh. Except for Josh. Yeah, well except for Josh. There's now I will admit it is an easy shortcut though, so yeah, and we are, I, and I am splitting hairs. And also, I am splitting hairs with it just so we are all clear. Yeah. I just like I'm the literally idea nitpicking. I uh, Fire Lord uh, Ozai just being up on Dragon Mount and just knocking Rand into a rock and just unlocking all of his chakras just all at the same time, and then he just walks around and all these good things happen. It's great. So, so everyone, Avatar: The Last Airbender spoilers up through season three, but not for Legend of Korra. Just Fire so we're clear. <laughs> Damn right. it, Daniel! So on to the next. We're a Wheel of Time <laughs> podcast. I don't care about spoilers for other series. <laughs> That's fair. So, uh, Badger, it's your turn to uh, be released on the green because saying release.